Okay, I think we're ready to start. If uh, I don't see anybody coming yet, so uh, it's late, so that's our issue. I'm David Zachariah, president of the board of the HOA, and I welcome all of you here uh, today. Um, it's nice to see a community that is hopefully trying to get together a little bit more. Uh, as time goes on. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Oh, great. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to say right at the beginning is, is that I acknowledge that scheduling this meeting uh, uh, today has caused some uh, significant concerns by some of our owners due to Passover uh, that starts from this evening. For them, I apologize for that. Uh, sorry about it. Is that better? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Uh, I apologize for scheduling on Passover. But what we kind of do is to schedule it this week because it's spring um, break week at schools. And we want to have as many people here as it's possible to hear it live. And uh, hopefully the people that are not here are tuned in on a remote program. Uh, and, uh, we'll uh, entertain some questions from those people who are attending remotely uh, as we move into the process. Uh, the... Uh, uh, after this meeting, uh, tomorrow or the next day, we will be sending out to all of you uh, a PDF of presentations that you're about to see on the screen. We're also filming this so that uh, you'll be able to uh, click on your computer and uh, on your emails and review what was said here today. Because ultimately, what we are looking for is your opinion as to which of these two design firms uh, we should really be negotiating a contract with to do all the work that we all want to get done. And so this is perhaps the most difficult decision in this entire process. And that's why we invited uh, uh, HGW here uh, today, as well as Carrier Johnson. Uh, <clears throat> so our purpose here is to introduce them to you uh, so that they can uh, uh, present their credentials, uh, their experience, uh, some of their concepts, um, but what it is not is a decision today to say, this is the design we're presenting to you. They will present some designs, but they're concepts only, and they're raw concepts at this stage of the game. And, uh, and they will, uh, whoever's chosen, have a lot of work to do, ultimately presenting it to you so that you can make the final decision as to what you want done in El Garage. A little background, uh, as soon as the new board uh, uh, took uh, uh, place in uh, late October, uh, we asked uh, Jack Hammond to chair it. Uh, Jack has done an outstanding job. Jack, stand up so people know who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Jack has only got about 40 or 50 years of experience uh, in the architectural world, being the leading or co-leading the largest architectural firm uh, in Utah. So without him, we couldn't have gotten to know how far we are. He put the committee, the committee uh, being composed of Irene Pringros. Irene's here. Irene. Uh, Jose Nasir. Amelia Hirschfeld. Amelia is here somewhere. Here is this, okay. And for them, you're all. And uh, so these five individuals then started with defining a process that we would have to go through because we want to have that definition. Uh, and so we would be all over the place and trying to find what designer that we would want. So here's the design, here's the process, and they stuck to it all the way through. They looked at 10 or 12 design firms uh, initially and uh, uh, interviewed a number of them and came down with the final two that you're hearing today. Uh, <clears throat> question for you to ask yourself uh, today or over the next week is uh, uh, who do you think best represent our culture, what we like, the flexibility, the understanding, the creativity, because if it's HDW, we're going to have to live with these people for the next couple of years, and we're going to be spending some money uh, in getting Almirador to the level that I think we all want it to be. So this is a critical decision. Your opinion matters to us. 
And so we want you informed so that when we ask you for your opinion in another week or 10 days or so, uh, which firm do you prefer? Uh, you're making a, a decision based, based on knowledge as opposed to just uh, your feel for the day without having this exposure. I want to tell you that whatever design uh, is presented today is not the final design. I will also tell you that the design committee has not seen any of the designs. The board has not seen any of the designs. Uh, so uh, you're into this thing at a very early stage, although Jacqueline's committee did a lot of work to get to this stage. Um, I'm sure it was very interesting to them. I don't know if it had been interesting to a lot of other people to do all the grunt work that Jacqueline's committee has done, but uh, we thank them to a great degree. The process that we're going to uh, follow today is a presentation by two firms, uh, first HEW. Uh, then I will have uh, uh, questions and comments from you all. We're limiting any comments or questions to three minutes per person. Is this better? Yes. I don't know. Yes. Yes. I can't hear myself. <laughs> Uh, so now the, the comments or questions that uh, you asked will be limited to three minutes, and we want to make certain that uh, all people have the opportunity to raise a question, time for me, uh, before somebody asks a second or third question or a second or third yeah. comment. We want to open up to well, everybody. Average DW makes their presentation, and what we'll do is break for a half an hour. Then I'll give time for the other firm to set up, and we'll go through the same routine with them. And I said, we'll send out a PDF with this presentation and uh, 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 a movie picture, if you will, of recording of what's taking place here today. So that if you have some questions, you want to review something, you can. If you want to raise questions this next week, okay, we're going to give you Jack's email address and you can send his questions, uh, your questions to him, and then he'll focus them on HW or Carrier Johnson as the case may be and get answers to you as, as quickly as you possibly can. One thing that uh, uh, I will tell you is, is we will have an estimated uh, uh, cost, if you will, of the project. And they call them the rough order of magnitude. Since we don't know the design yet, but these people have experience, they have a rough order of what the cost might be. And uh, you can't make that to the bank yet because no drawings have been made. So it's only a very rough estimate. But it's to put you into a situation of saying, here is approximately the range that we are talking about. After we decide as to who the individual firm is that's going to design this program for us, uh, we will um, have you involved as the process goes along, but the designs and the drawings will be made. And again, we'll make status reports to you. Hopefully, have a few more town halls so you can see it, ask questions, that type of thing. In other words, a very transparent process with a lot of um, going back and forth so that you get a feeling uh, that, uh, hey, this is my project because it is your project. You're the ones that are paying for it. So you got to have a say so in terms of what we uh, want to do. I can't talk today about any assessment because that's always in the top of everybody's mind, because one, we don't know the costs at this stage. Number two, we don't know how much of the reserves that we can extract out of our reserve fund uh, at this stage of the game. And so uh, uh, that is a premature conversation. But again, you will have the final vote because without your vote wanting to do something, it's not gonna get done. I will say to you though, I did a study uh, a week or so ago uh, and looking at values. And uh, just read off a couple of numbers for you. Uh, this is from all the sales of all the condos in Coronado, Georgia in 2022. The average square foot sales price of all condos was $1,746 per square foot. Now, Miradors. All condos that were sold in El Mirador was $1,326. That's a 24% difference between our price tag versus the other nine buildings. That's a 24% discount for El Mirador. Then I thought I'd look at one bedrooms. 
One bedroom sold for the 10 buildings at $1,578 a square foot. El Mirador's was $1,293, a $285 discount, 18% discount at El Mirador. If you have a thousand square feet in your one bedroom, you can multiply a thousand times 285 and see the value that we have lost relative to the other nine buildings. The average sale price of two bedrooms, of all two bedrooms out of the 10 buildings was $1,823 a square foot. $1,823 Ours was $1,263. That's a 31% decrease. And $560 per square foot difference. I didn't carry it on whether you have a bay view or an ocean view because that gets a little iffy. And so I can't hear it. Um, it, it, it hears better without the microphone on Zoom. So, and there could be uh, somebody's going to come and give us a wire microphone. Well, then I'll just speak louder. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay, good. Okay. So, anyhow, uh, what you see here is a significant differentiation in value. And our hope at the board level is to make this the premier building. We want to have a very nice building in which we can live in and be proud. And, and want to show it to other people and get people excited as they see it. I will tell you now that when realtors come in through the guardhouse area, they turn right, they don't turn left. And uh, we want to fix that issue as best as we can. What has made this whole thing possible, frankly, is all the actions of previous boards. And despite of our differences, I got to congratulate and thank the previous boards because they're the ones that went through the expensive things that you don't see. They relined the piping, for example, the new boiler, for example, the new cooling tower, the new elevators, okay? plus a myriad of other factors that you don't see, but they have to be there because that's the infrastructure of the building. That gives us the ability today now to do something to the walls, to the entry level, the lobby, the hallways upstairs, to make it look pretty. I'll, I'll take your questions in a minute. So we thank all the previous boards for all of their um, wonderful things. It's time now basically to put the party dress on to make ourselves look pretty. And that's where we wanna go with this particular project. So once done, I anticipate that our values will increase and uh, we'll uh, um, hopefully uh, uh, bear the fruits of all that effort and uh, investment. The first presentation is by Hannah Gabriel Wells, architects. Jim Gabriel, second from my right. Um, he is the principal architect at HCW. Uh, Magda Kubik, she is the interior designer. And uh, Marcetta Sato, and she's a, an interior designer. And uh, we also have a construction company here uh, called Johnson and Jennings. And this is Keith Stone, who is a project director. Um, before I turn the microphone over to you, Jim, did you have a question, sir? Yes, uh, you said that uh, relining the pipes of the building, that's only temporary. That's not a permanent fix, which everybody should be aware of. It's a really temporary band-aid problem. We didn't fix the problem. Okay. And number two is for the design firm, since our values are so low. Can you speak up a little louder, sir? Because our values are so low compared to the other buildings, did we look at any of the design firms that like did El Encanto, which is beautiful, but they have higher values than our, our building? Yes, we did. Yeah. We did. Okay. And okay. Did they, is Coronado the name? The shore is waiting. The following is waiting. Getting somebody who's got experience with those issues saves time, saves money. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Jim, your show. Uh, well, uh, uh, can you uh, can you hear me speaking? Okay, you can try this without the microphone. If at any time you're not hearing this, just let us know, and we'll we'll uh, use our phone. 
Um, well, thank you. Thank you, David. Is it, uh, is it possible for the to speak introductions here? And, and thank you to. Is it possible for you to speak here so soon people can hear you? Or, uh, or, or I can possibly take this. It will be easier because we're actually going to be just kind of sharing conversation. Mm -hmm. if so that's I'll, possible. I'll do that camera. So. <laughs> is that better? Okay. Um, yeah, and, and thanks uh, to the, the committee, of course, that's uh, been instrumental in getting us involved. And, and most importantly, thanks to you all. Uh, for being here today to let us uh, share ideas with you. Um, it's an exciting project, your, your, your tower and the idea of renovating the common areas. And, um, you know, we, we don't take that lightly. We, we do think it's a very special project. It's unique. And um, we're excited to uh, share with you a, a lot of uh, first thoughts. And they are just that. They're initial thoughts. They're things that inspired us that we think you might uh, find uh, the same inspiration in. Uh, but it's it's really a chance for us today to to share how we work, how we communicate uh, so that you can get a better sense of who we are and the way we think and our design aesthetic. And, um, and uh, hopefully the goal is to reach a, a comfort level as David said, we do end up living together for a long time on projects like this. So we want to make sure if uh, it's that kind of relationship where we, we're in it together and we uh, work partner and we have more in some time and um, hope that comes through today. Uh, so what we put together is uh, a kind of walkthrough and, and review some of our initial ideas, thoughts, how that translates into things like materials and finishes, and then how those go on to inform the actual creation of space that, that we'll be creating and building. And uh, we'll be walking right through the building from the ground. And then we're going to conclude at the end uh, and talk a little bit about how we imagine the construction delivery process throughout so that it kind of marries well with the design process. And Keith and his team have been uh, looking at it in parallel with our team on the design side as we've been doing this effort. Uh, so with that, let's um, move up to the uh, beginning here. Go ahead. One more. As a place of beginning, we thought it, it made sense for us to begin by a kind of re by reflecting upon reflecting upon the survey results. And you, you may recall there was a survey that was sent out earlier uh, to, the, so to the homeowners. And it asked some basic questions about design character, the feeling, the mood of the spaces. And that was then uh, communicated back to us. So we spent time with the committee talking about the goals of the project, the uh, the facility with with everyone, and we looked over the survey results. And one of the things that uh, really resonated with us uh, was was this idea that the project might reflect uh, this this kind of uh, coastal uh, beachy mood. Uh, it, it would have a calmness to it, uh, but at the same time, it should be something that's elegant and timeless, something warm. And we took all that to heart. And you'll see that in the presentation in terms of the way we're approaching the choice of materials, the mood of the spaces. Um, and it is the way uh, that the sort of general tint of the way we moved with the project. So the way we begin, we start by first uh, looking at uh, just general ideas. And we get these ideas from all different kinds of projects, projects we've done, projects other people have done. And we're looking for sources of inspiration that inspire uh, approaches for us. So here you can start to see we're thinking about exterior. And we're thinking about ways in which ceilings and materials can change the character and feel, the way lighting 
uh, starts to have a real difference in the way you feel about space. The idea of creating outdoor space, uh, which doesn't exist today there. Uh, and then importantly, thinking about the landscape, not having something that's off on the edges, but something that's an integral part of creating a space that's both inside and out. The lobby design leaves inspiration from various resorts around the world. There are central resorts. Um, here we would like to. And here, like the uh, Plato over some of the common design elements in that space. We also see the African here in the um, Some of the spaces you see in the warm, the feel of all company. Uh, they use a variety of different modes and wood textures. Um, some of that beachy atmosphere is projected through use of um, natural elements from the rawness of the desk you see in the middle to the high polish um, columns. So different textures. Um, some of the softness is brought in through use of draperies, plants, and also providing variety of comfortable seating areas throughout. Some other elements we see are warm, uh, mostly neutral, timeless, elegant color palettes with some pops of color. Um, most of the patterns you see would be natural, textural, uh, and then you see a strong use in the panel and strong use of diagonals. And also that soft and wholeness is projected through use of screens and a transparency and glow. Um, some of, uh, most of the lighting you would see is indirect. With these beautiful durable fixtures. Speaking of lighting, here are some concepts, some ways that this aesthetic could be interpreted in lighting, um, casual, elegant, approachable, inspired by nature. At the familiar on the left is actually inspired by shapes of sea urchins. So you see these in art form throughout. Some of the ways that French art and accessories could be interpreted in this concept. Lots of textures again, um, lots of variety, tonal variety, seeing art as a way to really have the space um, stand out and pop, um, modern, um, contemporary with nature themes. And we see some of the accessories, you know, that's where we get to have a lot of fun as well. It's like um, accessories having the natural feel to them, that perfect imperfection of what you would find in nature. And an, over, and an overall finished palette concepts, neutral, textural, very rich in textures, but also very timeless. And that would also complement the fabric that you already have in the lobby that we plan on keeping some of it. Um, and warm tones with lots of color, as you can see, like towards the left image, that's a beautiful tile with a um, natural pattern that is blue. And then we have some of the finishes here, so if you want to come and touch it, those of you who are present here, uh, we feel free to do that to get a feel of what we're envisioning for this space. Okay, so that is that kind of a framework, if you will, for uh, what, what we're thinking about in the background. So what we're going to do now is really start to walk through uh, our initial vision of how that could be applied to your spaces. So um, starting with, we'll start with the exterior. We're going to move into the main lobby, to the elevator lobby, on up to the residential floors, and then all the way to the individual unit entries. So it's kind of a progression that way. Um, we're going to start with what you have today. This is your existing building entry. Things that jump out to us is it, it's a space that doesn't convey anything social or a space that we need to pause or gather. It's simply a space for passage, something that you move through, uh, come and go, and that's about it. And, and it's also not a space that has a lot of visual interest. There, it's very monochromatic. It's, uh, it's got this sort of simple symmetry to it. it. It's not really doing the job it should be doing to create something special coming to your building. So uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, when we start thinking about this space, this is a, a concept plan, if you will. And uh, you can see we're still very interested in defining uh, the entry coming in from the drop-off into the building. 
defining it well, creating a new clear entry to the building, uh, but then starting to really think of the space differently now and uh, taking that pair of fountains, we're looking at the idea of removing one, reconfiguring the other into more of a water garden, if you will, and then the other side, creating a, a social space, a place where you can gather. Uh, and you can see there with seating, it's built around the idea of an outdoor fire element. Uh, and the idea is this is a place to decompress coming into your homes, uh, leaving behind, parking in cars, and uh, it's a space hopefully to meet with friends, neighbors, uh, and, and, and be able to pause and enjoy. So how that might look is, is, is what we're depicting here. And you can see we're imagining taking that existing ceiling canopy that's out there today and uh, you know, cleaning it up and also putting a, a really kind of beautiful warm wood entryway in it that helps define where you come in, beautiful lighting. Uh, and then you're starting to see that that really beautiful kind of gathering seating area over there on the right, next to the outdoor fire area. On the left, you're seeing that redefined water element, you know, with the kind of rock elements and water can be gurgling over those. And the idea is to upgrade all the landscape in there. You would even love to look at the idea of really bringing the landscape back from the planter above by the trail in. And capture, I don't know if you've ever seen the beautiful cenotes down in the Yucatan, Mexico. There are beautiful holes in the earth. They drop down to the water reflecting below in the vines. And they have such an amazing kind of mystical quality. And we thought that could be beautiful as a, as a point of pause when you're coming in, into your project. You go to the next. And then you'll see this format as we walk through the space. Uh, some, these are just some concept images that go to inspire us about uh, the details of a space like this when we think about the elements from the furniture to the planters to the ceilings. Um, and, and so uh, it's really uh, trying to think of it in its totality as a beginning point. Now we're moving into the lobby through a portal. Um, this is your existing lobby. Um, again, here we would like to point out it's more of a circular shape right now. Everything is oriented circularly. And your front um, and center thing that you see is that front reception desk. Um, and it's a little bit colder, harder surfaces currently. Um, what we are proposing, this is our proposed plan for the lobby as we're thinking conceptually through it. Um, we are proposing to open it up, make it a little bit more rectangular while keeping the circular circulation of stairs up and down. Um, you would enter through an entry portal, which we'll show you in a rendering. And the first thing you would see is this amazing, comfortable, welcoming seating area with a feature wall with feature wall behind it. To provide access so you don't have to walk up and down the stairs always, um, provide access to directly to elevators, we would install a lift that will take you down to the lower level and right across from the elevators there. Um, this could help with um, luggage as well. For that reason, what we're proposing is looking at moving the front desk to the left-hand side, where it would have great overview of the entire lobby. And also, if somebody comes in and will be using the lift, that person can easily come to them and help them over there. Um, for the conference room and office area, we're looking at opening that up to the lobby, having it accessed through a hallway. And we see this conference room, and we'll show you images of what we're thinking a little bit later, um, this kind of textural glowing glass box that would have um, some kind of a beverage counter or a beautiful you know, counter across from it as you enter through these you know, wide doors and also have access to the exterior. So also take use of that exterior seating area directly from the conference room. And what this arrangement allows us to do is create a secondary seating area. So not only the first one as you come in, but also in front of the conference room. So 
now we're creating areas that several people can gather, you know, up front, um, before you hit the front lobby, and then also inside the lobby as well. Um, for softness and for, um, uh, you know, light control, we're proposing draperies, and you'll see that in our rendering as well. So this is our initial vision of what the lobby could feel like. You would be drawn in through this beautiful wood um, ceiling element that would resemble and be a continuation, visual continuation of what you had talked about at the front entry. That would end in a wood um, feature wall with um, feature like fixtures and that welcoming seating area. So the first thing you see is more of a community living room that you come in with the front desk off to the left hand side. Um, again, looking at neutral color palettes um, that complement the travertine columns that you have there, or some of the travertine cladding that you have, and using different colors of wood, um, textures, variety there. And then there's an opportunity since you have lobby on one level and then looking down, up and down at the two split levels with elevator lobbies. Um, further back, there's an opportunity for a bolder, brighter color that would then draw a visitor into the elevators. Another view of the lobby, here we're looking directly at that front desk. We see um, a beautiful stone wall in the back, which could also be an opportunity for um, sculptural art to be located on top of. Here you see the drapery softening that front entry, and you really feel that connection of the interior to exterior. Um, we would like to enhance the entry doors with a portal. What you see there is a wood portal with a bronze color detailing and an elevator door sign above it. So there is a recession and a um, procession of a welcome through a portal and then come sit down. Some of the finishes um, complementing what we just talked about in the lobby. Um, I would like to just point out the wood air, the wood visuals there. We're envisioning lighting and detailing in that wood feature wall, similar to what you see here. For the conference room, as I mentioned, um, more of a glass box. The two images on the left bottom is what we envision to give people in the conference room meeting a little bit of privacy, but also have it feel open to the lobby itself. Um, some of the materials and counters we would um, propose to use are marble, or lava stones to get that beautiful feel of nature, natural elements. So now we just want to talk about the hallways, the mail and package room. Um, so this is the existing currently, and we really view these areas from the parking garage as an extension of the lobby. And so we really want to enhance these areas as well kind of bringing in those warm tones um, and pops of color that were mentioned previously. So looking at the plan view, we really are starting with the parking entries as this is the main entry that you'll be going through after parking your car. And so really trying to elevate these spaces with planting and bringing those same materials as the lobby within these spaces as well. And looking at furniture as we can place. Um, again, looking at these entryways, um, really elevating it, and we really liked how the mailroom was set up, very open, um, and we wanted to take that concept to the package storage. So we took the package room that you have now and made a large opening for storage units and an island where you can touch down and open your mail on the left side. So this is just a rendering of that package room. As you can see, it's very open and we're proposing to put in parcel um, lockers for you. So the mailman can just go directly to these parcel lockers and there's a different uh, variations of ways where you could be notified to then pick up your package um, after picking up your mail. So just having an area to touch down and pick up um, so this is just the concept of the different finishes that we're proposing to use. Again, warm tones of wood, lots of texture, um, just to really enhance these areas for you um, coming out of the lobby area. Our lighting, indirect, and of course the pops of colors. 
And again, like I mentioned earlier, um, this really just starts at the parking entries and we really wanted to elevate those spaces. So having um, the floor and tile continue into it just to connect those spaces, um, adding in wood paneling to make it warm and welcoming along with the planting. And we also looked at the staff room, um, opening it up for a kitchenette and um, also with some lounge seating for staff. Now we're moving up the building into residential hallways level three to level 15. Also just a reminder of what the hallway looks like currently. Um, it is a bit dark um, and a little bit formal right now with kind of the dark red woods and the sheen in the flooring. So we are proposing to bring that same aesthetic um, from that established in the lobby up the building as well. Um, one of the ways we would propose doing that is using the same tile that's used in the lobby, also in the elevator cabs, that will be redone in new, and also um, on the elevator lobbies, levels three through 15. So it is that continuation of the lobby. Then down the corridor, we're proposing um, a custom pattern carpet, which is more appropriate as a finish here, with a pad, not only because it's soft, but also for the acoustical values. Part of the renovations of the residential hallways is the trash room as well. And then again, enhancing the residential entries, which we'll touch on a little bit later. So this is our vision of what um, your residential elevator um, lobby and hallways could feel like. Again, using wood paneling, um, referencing the feature walls down in the lobby. Also a way to hide the electrical room door, which currently is the first thing you see as you come out. Um, using indirect lighting down all the hallways, getting rid of any surface mounted, but everything be very clean, very glowing and indirect. Um, and then feature lighting, as you see here in the elevator lobby and then some sconces. Again, lots of vari variations of textures, um, two tones of wood that we're proposing that we can show you here. Um, we're seeing accent color, like a metal to be a bronze form. Um, also a way to resurface the elevator doors. We see those as becoming bronze. And then of course, use an art to pull you in. So we see a beautiful piece of art at the end of every hallway. And as we mentioned, every seating area, also mail room, package room, we would like to um, add seating where we can. A couple things to point out here. Um, bronze lettering, bronze color lettering, as you can see there for signage. Um, the carpet on the right top is a pattern that we would propose um, using a custom shop carpet. It is highly customizable in colors, in patterns, in scale, and we would develop that together. Um, one way that we see customizing these hallways to feel different on every floor is by careful selection of art. And then also having that grouping, the seating grouping be different every floor. What you see below is a bench and a side table instead of the chairs that we're, that we're showing in the elevation. Great. Well, you, so you've seen this, this progression uh, up through the building from uh, you know, the, the arrival and exterior entry and through the lobby, elevator lobbies, up to the corridors. And, and we see that, that uh, character, that feel, wanting to translate all the way to the individual entries to each of the units. Um, you know, in some ways, uh, you know, your, your entries are probably the part of the building you interact with the most of everything else in the building, because it's, it's the coming and going point uh, all day. So uh, we think it is important they're detailed right. And so what you're seeing here is an idea of Kind of wrapping them in these new wood portals, uh, giving them new doors uh, with a with a much nicer uh, kind of character and finish to them, uh, lighting, uh, and then uh, also looking at you know the right kind of door levers that have the right feel to your touch, uh, and then also importantly looking at this is showing an idea of a, a, like an, a illuminated a bronze a resident ID tag, so that could have numbers, it could have names, however you would like to have those customized, but the idea is they're creating a, a individualness at each location uh, throughout. And they're also 
becoming these wonderful little um, highlights along the corridor. So that it's, you know, when you go through today, it's, it's kind of just same, same, same. And the, the idea here is to create uh, these sort of special moments that occur in each of your individual units. You know, it's, it's in, in, our, in our mind, uh, you know, these are supposed to be a microcosm of the total project at large, and you're supposed to see the details from the smallest to the biggest. So that is, uh, that's kind of our overview. That's our, our initial thoughts um, uh, of how, you know, and again, as David said very clearly, we've done this in a vacuum. We haven't had the benefit to, to work with, it, with you all and, and, and get your feedback. So we did this just purely speculating from our, from our own point of view and trying to draw on the information that, that we gained from talking with a few members and, and uh, visits in your survey. So um, it's, it's painting a nice picture, but it's an incomplete picture until it really gets a chance to engage with you all. Uh, so that that is kind of the way we wrapped up the design, and then uh, what we what we did is we uh, we asked our uh, partner. Uh, I call him my, my partner. He's, he's actually uh, got his own company, but it, we've we've worked together on many projects, uh, Johnson and Jennings and and, and Keith, and and uh, we thought they were important to bring in early because one of the things that uh, we think to reach success on a project, it, it has to have three parts. You have to have a great owner, a great design team, and a great builder. And they all have to be working together as a team. And the way you do that is you bring the contractors in early, let them get involved throughout the design process so that they can help provide feedback about scheduling, about budgets, about the logistics of, of how things are really going to get built um, so that uh, and as the design evolves, the overall approach to how to do the project evolve and it allows them to take in input about things we learn about your own uh, you know, needs and your own abilities to you know, schedule work or, or phase the work. Um, so with that, uh, we put together just a, a little section here at the end to touch upon that process and um, some of Keith's first thoughts based on the design that we put together here today. Thanks, Jim. I thought my, my job was going to be harder, but I think just listening to uh, Hannah Gabriel Wells today, and the thought process and the effort they put in based on your vision um, really says a lot. And uh, so a couple of things, I just want to kind of put, put this at a high level because this is really a rough order that at least gives you guys the opportunity to get a feel for uh, not only current market values, but you know, we're talking here we are in 2023 project, you know, probably kick off and first or second quarter of 2024. And everybody has <clears throat> been reading the news and all that, inflation and all that other good stuff. So I try to give you in this quick analysis, just an overview of where we may be heading on some escalation, historical data escalation. And then um, we have engaged uh, quite a few of our subcontractors to get their eyes on the systems component. And then based on his, our historical data that we own, uh, intellectually, uh, intellectual property uh, within Johnson & Jennings. We've been doing this for 40 years, so we have a lot of data to collect from, and uh, we're happy to share this with you as far as probable uh, cost. Uh, so I, what I ended up doing was just breaking this out, very simple, area one, area two, and area three. Area one is the main lobby, the L1, L2 corridors, the mail rooms, the garage foyers, which have a certain element to themselves, and uh, the office, the conference room, the staff break room. So that's area one. Uh, then uh, I isolated area two, which would be your L3 through L15, uh, the resident corridors, elevator lobbies, 
and the finishes in essence, and then some enhancements to the elevator cab surrounds and the elevator cars themselves. So that's area two. And then area three would be the main entry exterior, the outdoor features, uh, exclusive of the canopy, which we've actually had provided two different uh, cost approaches. Uh, we've been asked to break out, just kind of halting for that large canopy and enhancing it and just enhancing the finishes or actually possibly a second alternate would be to come in while we're doing the exterior work and uh, taking that canopy out of play and creating a more uh, modernized and uh, uh, structurally sound component to the overall design. So <clears throat> with that being said, area one, main lobby, L2, L2 corridors, uh, we're dealing with about 4,000 300, almost 4,400 square feet. Uh, the other thing I wanted to, you know, not really drill down to at this point, maybe during Q&A, we can talk a little bit about schedule and how we uh, anticipate how we would you know, project approaching the project from a construction standpoint uh, with minimal impact. Uh, so with that being said, the main lobby, L2, L2 corridors, garage foyers, everything I've mentioned, uh, we're looking, I'm just going to use round numbers right now, of about $2.4 million on that component. Uh, area two, the corridors, 13 floors, the lobbies, the elevator enhancements, the lighting, the finishes. Uh, there's about 14,000 square feet of uh, footprint we're touching there. Um, we're looking at about $3.5 million. And then if we come back downstairs to the main entry, uh, we're looking at about a 2,200 square foot space, and we're looking at about a 995, all intents and purposes to say around $1 million to enhance the um, exterior features as proposed here today. Again, I do want to just qualify that this is all a rough order of magnitude, uh, but just give you guys a sense to bring it in the ballpark where we're fairly confident that we've captured a lot of the elements that uh, Jim's group uh, has put uh, effort-wise, and uh, I'm also projecting this, you know, nine to twelve month period before we actually get construction. So there'll be ranges, and certainly uh, having us work as a team, we're able to vet that in the front end and work with the group and the team, uh, whoever else is assigned to the project, to help you know bring the best value to the table as far as this project is concerned. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, thank you, Keith. And um, uh, yeah, so Keith has been fantastic in helping us, uh, you know, really look at this. And it's no easy task to, you know, have a group of designers like us throw a bunch of pictures and, and notes and conversations and and get their hands around it and try to give it. Um, basis and and they've done a terrific job with that and uh so we're really happy to have that as a component of the presentation because uh as we said it's it's that partnership that you have to have owner builder you know designer all working together so that's why we wanted to present this uh in context together to you today so with that, uh, that kind of concludes our uh, presentation. Uh, we want to thank you again for uh, allowing us to uh, take time and, and present to you all, and, and certainly for your consideration uh, of our office and our team. And uh, we'll turn it over now to uh, questions and, uh, for the remaining time. Uh, I think I saw your hand go up right here, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, about uh, over 20 years ago, I was board president of uh, Cabrillo, and the uh, first question we had to do on the canopy, I said, just take it down. I said, I'm going to get out my car, it's true, and also we found the blue model wall, and most of the buildings have taken the canopies out, and I think that's something to consider. Number two. Number two. Uh, we have the desk now. Oh, we get packages and they're stored just by the desk, or they put them in the conference room. 
which is translucent. So we're going to see a bunch of boxes sitting on a table. Uh, it'd be nice if we're going to redo the conference room with the desk over there, like in most buildings, to where there's a door where they can put things and keep them out of view when you walk in. Uh, and number three is uh, the carpeting in the buildings uh, next to the beach doesn't last and it has to constantly be replaced. Most of the buildings have gone to hard surfaces, which you can do with uh, uh, either cork or the neoprene for sound proofing. And you can also use different textures on the ceilings that help with the sound proofing in that regard, instead of having just hard surfaces all the way around. Those are just some of my ideas. Having been in El Camino, uh, Cabrillo, Las Palmas, La Perla, and now El Mirador. Wonderful, and thank you very much. Uh, there, uh, they, they're all great comments, and um, uh, we we have we have talked about you know the entry canopy. Is it really better just to remove it, uh, replace it? Um, those are great discussions we would certainly be wanting to have as, as the process would develop. Um, and we do have we do have some thoughts on the whole package uh, system because we know that's a real important topic, how you manage parcels. Uh, and what we're showing in the plan is, is more of a system that we're seeing in most of the uh, newer towers being done now uh, where they're using these uh, uh, a parcel storage and the FedEx and UPS people are going directly there. They're loading them up. It's managing. So you're not doing the usual handoff and stockpiling. And then the person at the desk has to then take the parcel and go move it to another space. Uh, the idea is it, it, it kind of almost like your mail, the way you, you know, the a mail delivery goes directly in, they load up the mail, you check your mail. Uh, it's the same strategy with, with the parcel system. And there's a lot of variations on this, from low tech to high tech. Uh, but it's something we would at least want to discuss. It may not be the right approach, uh, but we think it's worthy of a, a discussion, certainly. Yeah. Right, right there. Yes, thank you. My name is Teresa Boone, and my husband is here, and we own several units. So I have a great interest in what you're saying. Uh, first of all, I like very much the color, the concept, the design. There are so many nice things that I really like. And I just have um, I have a few comments. Uh, you mentioned the use of wood, uh, being here close to the water and the moisture. Of course, if we're going to have to pay all this money, and I know there's going to be a big special assessment, we want something to last. You know, till we die, I don't know how long that's going to be. <laughs> but uh, anyway, what, uh, what's the idea of using wood and moisture and bleach and all this? Because I see lots of the design include wood. So that's one thing. Yes. Yeah. I have several other points. So I can, I can, uh, I can address them one at a time or if you would like to okay add. the other thing uh, you mentioned about putting drapery and we want something low maintenance and doesn't need cleaning and this and that and drapery collect dust so that's another thing that uh, i'm concerned about the third thing the gentleman mentioned the same thing about the use of carpet and most of the people who own in the building they have pets and sometimes it's very very hard to clean the stains and i I was in, involved in the design committee and the previous board, and I had the opportunity to walk through all the buildings and the ones, the newer remodels, and many of them just eliminated the carpet altogether, which is very, very nice and looks very nice. So that's another thing. And a couple of more items. Um, you mentioned something about the travertine. I didn't know you had travertine in our building. It's mainly porcelain or granite. Uh, where where was the other team that you said you're going to keep? So there's uh, today there's uh, travertine cladding on the columns in the lobby, as well as kind of wrapping around. Oh, the, uh, okay. So it's not much of that. Okay. No, it's well, travertine is uh, some sort of 
It's often referred to as Roman marble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's slightly different, but it's, uh, yeah, it, the material is actually travertine. Okay. And of course, the last thing that you might not like what I'm going to say, I was shocked at $7 million all inclusive. I added the 2.5 plus 3.5 plus 1, so that came to $7 million. That includes everything. Okay, well, things have doubled since the last remodel that I've seen in one of the nicer buildings. So that's another thing. And owning several units, I'm not really thrilled about paying all this. I divided the 7 million by 150 units average, so it came to 46,000 units. Uh, dollar. But anyway, that's something we're not going to discuss today. But if we're going to choose something, we want something to last, something low maintenance, till we leave this world to another world. So something that can last forever. But it looks very nice. Thank you so much. I don't want to take any more time of the of you. Wonderful. Thank, thank you for the comments. Those are all uh, absolutely real. And those are precisely the kind of conversations that we would be having uh, as we got into the design process. Do you have remote questions? Yes, yeah, we have one yes. one question on Zoom for um, what would the projected time be for each area for the remodel? Right, so if we, if, if we uh, back up in the presentation or go forward to the, uh, the cost portion, you'll see there was, uh, well, probably no one can actually see it. Um, because it's blurry, I'm not sure why it's blurry, but um, what we've done is we've we put in uh, durations of what uh, Keith and his team, looking at each of the phases, thinking about what are the probable durations of time that would be associated with those different activities. Um, uh, as David said, we'll be sharing uh, this, this uh, presentation, what we presented here today, and so you'll be able to look at that and, and actually be able to look at the uh, kind of range of time that we think would, would go with each of those durations. Yeah, the, the important thing uh, to Jim's point is um, how, many, how many phases we're actually able to take the work and how many areas we're able to actually take out of commission because obviously uh, you know, people are still living and operating within in the building. So we, that would be part of our means and methods and planning and definitely would be uh, broadcast and, and you know, they'd be buying from the tenants and uh, we would make sure that all our materials have been purchased and procured uh, before uh, we actually start construction. That's a very important element, especially in today's age with, uh, with lead times and whatnot being what they are on, on materials. So, uh, that's a definitely a conversation phasing, multiple phasing. Uh, we, you know, we've even talked about maybe working around the clock, but obviously people are sleeping in their units, so that's probably not the best, you know, approach. But certainly, we're we're looking at all those things and be sensitive to uh, the residents that are actually in the in their in their units themselves. So more more to discuss on that for sure. You had some questions right here. Yeah, will will all the re will all the residents have access at all times during this construction? Well, um, again, that's kind of part of the pre-planning process. So access to their unit, um, we would definitely strive to uh, make that allowance. Uh, it might even uh, be where we have to. Uh, do half of a corridor and break it up in, in sections. Uh, and our goal would be to work a floor every three weeks, you know, as far as the, the, the corridor is concerned. Again, paramount is going to be materials on hand, proper crew sizes, and any other logistics that come into play. However, um, if there's special circumstances, if there's a year-round tenant, uh, you know, occupancy, I understand, is, is fluctuates with seasons, that type of thing. Uh, and of course, we would look at all that. I think the short answer is, um, if you needed to have access, we would make accommodations. But we still got, there's a lot of areas we're touching, a lot of areas, so we would want to make it safe and uh, 
that's paramount to our construction process as well. Hope I answered your question. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Any questions online? Um, I'm assuming that um, El Mirador is going to assign a project manager for the duration of the project that uh, will interface with the board, the, the community, as well as with the design committee. Will you guys be allocating a dedicated resource project manager that we can work with? I, I do mean dedicated. That's going to be just sharing a bunch of other responsibilities. Uh, when, when you say uh... Uh, you guys, you're referring to us on the design well, team side. Well, so who's going to be, when we get when we start construction, so we can get to you guys. Who are we going to interface with? Yeah, on who are we going to interface with? You or the contractor? Right. So, uh, you know, during during construction, the the general contractor, you know, they're in charge of the, their job site because, as Keith said. You know, they have to oversee the, the coming and going, the security, the safety. So it's their it's their site to take care of. On the design side, we stay active throughout the entire process. We probably have weekly meetings. We're assuming that the uh, homeowners association will also be assigning a construction manager that represents your interests yes we will and they would be in attendance at those same weekly meetings so every week you have representatives from uh, you all on the residents from the design team and from the construction team that can go through so as issues come up if there's topics if something needed to be delayed or pushed forward that's all being discussed you know, each week with the team as we go through the process. So there will be dedicated project manager from us, I guess, from Keith, your side, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you might be speaking from experience and uh, <laughs> partially. Yes. So I will address that. Um, you know, this is a highly um, visible and highly trafficked area in terms of pedestrians and people and residents. So. Um, we will have 100% full-time supervision. We will be living with you guys, basically. So, um, and then project manager, a uh, full-time dedicated project manager assigned to this project. So there will never be a gap in communication. Uh, we will be pivoting often, um, but certainly you will not be in the dark. I think that's what's most important, is that uh, clear communication all the time. That's, that's, that's the way we do business. Perfect, thank you. Uh, yes, um, two quick questions. And, and first of all, I apologize for coming late. I didn't get a chance to see all the design. The look that I saw just towards the end was clean, but I tend to agree with the young lady regarding the amount of wood. And frankly, that's, that's not a favorite for me from an aesthetic standpoint. But my two questions real quickly. One, the $7 million, do you have contingency built into that? Or is there a contingency percentage that you use in addition to that number just to ensure normal support for I'm not talking about supply chain and inflation and the rest. And then the second part of the question, what are you going to be doing in terms of utilization of a staging area for all of the supplies and materials that you're bringing in? And how does that fit into your master plan in terms of the tight space that we have in and around Maribor. Great. And uh, yes, there are uh, contingencies built in. I'll, we'll advance the uh, slide. Don't know if you'll be able to read it, because it appears. I think there's something out of focus on this projector. I'm wondering if, if we could try to adjust the focus setting, because it, it feels like the images are coming up a little blurry here. But I'll let Keith speak specifically to your questions. So those are actually really good questions. So I'll address your, your, your first uh, question. Um, and this is just a, a sample of where we spread cost at this level. It, you know, it's, it's very preliminary, but of course, 
we're not going to give you today's market without contingency. So I, I think also to address um, your concern is we have a range right now, but built in, um, I'm going to just kind of keep it really high level and you know this PDF will be shared with you, but it's very indicative of how uh, fees get spread and uh, contingency dollars get spread across the cost of the work. The most important thing is the final cost of work. And that's not established yet because it could be three million, it could be eight million. We don't know if we're working towards that mean. However, the components, uh, there's a list I've listed about, I don't know, it's about 15 or 20 items in this in this section. So we're using the baseline of the area one, area two, not the exterior. Uh, we're basing on, let's say, six million dollars, five point eight million dollars of work. The lobbies and the corridors and all the, the, the ancillary areas. So we were projecting the actual cost of work at $4.5 million, which is about 76% of the cost. As we spread through that, and I'll keep this very high level, we had some pre-construction services that we would, um, uh, from a true GC, CMGC, construction management, general contractor, we would be engaged in the front end. That's 15,000 or 0.27%. Uh, as we come down, general conditions, uh, this gentleman had asked about uh, that specific, that's the management, on-site management of the job, 3.7% uh, of that 5.8. As you go down, our GL insurance is about 1.3%. Our overhead and our fee combined is four and a quarter percent. And again, that, that, that's one thing that, you know, at this level is something that we would negotiate with the, you know, depending on the final cost of work. But these are st industry standards right now as far as percentage breakouts. Uh, then we get design contingency. At this level, we're at 4%. That's two hundred and seven, dollars almost $300,000. Then our historical market escalator, which we you know, alluded to earlier, that's 3.8%. That's another 200000 And then construction contingency, which really is something that, as a general contractor, regardless of design, complete or not complete, we actually have a 6% contingency or almost $400,000. Now, one thing that's really, really important to understand is once we establish the actual cost of work, all these contingencies start getting chiseled away and they're fully exposed and all the savings goes back to the, to the, to the owner. So we want to make sure we're giving you a big picture, high level, higher range number that we can work back towards once the design is complete. And we go very hard after um, getting three or four subcontractors deep. Some of this work is specialized, highly specialized, so we may not have the luxury of going out to uh, multiple subcontractors, but we have a database, a huge database in Southern California. And our job as a construction manager would be to really bring the value home and make sure you're getting better prices from the subcontracting level. So I appreciate that granularity, yeah. and I apologize. I didn't mean for you to go line by line. No, no, no. That, for... Actually, that was a slide. I'm glad you did because that was a slide I kind of avoided because I didn't want to get into that minutia. But we've already evaluated it because I know these are questions that certainly are important to you. So um, yeah, I'm happy to share these with you. And these are just these are. Uh, what do you want to call it? Reference only. So you really have an idea of where the numbers kind of get get played in. But everything is based on the cost of work. That's the big one. Staging area. Oh, yes. Well, I think she's had her hand up. I like your ex the uh, exterior and uh, that seating area. So have you factored in our wind tunnel? There is a huge wind tunnel through there, and it keeps our doors open. We have to put a bar there to keep on top of it. So has that been factored in? So yeah, no, that that is a real issue, and um, you know, part of it is is trying to build that layering of space. I don't know if it's fully developed yet, but the the thinking was if we uh, with some landscape, it may even require putting some kind of screen elements in the foreground. Uh, but the idea is to create some sort of buffer so by the time you do reach seating, it does have a level of protection to it. 
Um, and I know exactly what you're talking about. When we were there, we, we, we saw that what you're talking about. So, um, and we've actually even talked about rather than going to uh, a pair of swinging doors, maybe even going to sliding doors uh, as a way to mitigate against that, that constant buffering. Uh, so uh, we are aware of it. I don't know that we've solved it. I, I think we're at this level, we're still kind of way, way up here in our uh, uh, thought process, but uh, it's on our radar that that's, that is an issue that's part of your, uh, the reality of the entryway there. This gentleman back here and then over here. There's a question about the canopy and also the lift. I couldn't follow on the drawings where the lift that you're talking about goes. And I want to know also if it's ADA compliant. And I asked that question just because the aesthetics of those are sometimes terrible. And I don't know what's out there in the marketplace. Um, can you follow it for us starting at LL and then into the lobby and then above? Because in, in some of the uh, renderings, it looks like when you walk in, there's that nice straight wood wall, and I didn't see a break for where the lift would be. I'm talking about the aesthetics of the lift. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And um, that is. Uh, that is our goal, that it should be discrete and it should be something that doesn't interrupt the space. So what we're looking at here, this is a, a two-stop lift. So it goes from it goes from L1 or the ground floor uh, lower level uh, elevator lobby area. It goes up to the main lobby floor, which is a half a level up. So that's all it's doing is it's conveying from, from the main lobby down to the lower, in which at that point you have access to the elevators and you can, you can move in through the building in that regard. And the idea is there's some, it's actually some very elegant lifts. Uh, this we've designed so it uh, meets all the ADA requirements. So it's a fully accessible lift. Uh, it's using, uh, this one is proposed with a glass wall system so that it can tie in with the uh, railing system, the guardrail system that's there. So, and again, keep the transparency. And you know, when you approach it, it's actually just a gate uh, because the rails are down at 42 inches. It's not like a full elevator hoistway. You go on to the platform, the platform lowers to the uh, uh, to the lower level, and then you open another door and, and you go out there. So uh, we think there are devices that should work very well here, and um, and they're coming. You know, they're commercial grade. These aren't just for individual residences. These are made for public spaces, and uh, I think it would be a good a good solution here in in this context. Yeah, I, I was talking mainly about in the lobby, the wall that I think your drawings now show is, a, is that nice piece of wood, and I didn't see anything to the left of it showing the actual right. can, can you flip to, yes, so. Oh, I see, I see why it's tucked in. There's a gate, there's a gate right there. I, it's in, it, it is there, it's trying to be discreet, but it's also, it's positioned to still be very accessible and very easy to come in and use. Yeah, yeah, it's good because I missed it. The other thing is, on the issue, uh, if it needs to be taken down, and I'm sure that you as a person uh, who uh, sees these quite a bit, you know, there's a huge sun factor there. We're now living here full year, so we get the, the whole impact. We're also in that corner that's over there, so I got to see the guys trying to destroy the one uh, at the building across the way with their little jackhammers for three months. And all they needed was one little machine that was able to, to cut it correctly. Uh, so I got to watch and, and listen to all of that. Um, 
But uh, just the question of sun, so if a determination is made that it makes sense to do a replacement as opposed to trying to use this dedicated what's there, or that thing needs to be out as far as possible. Because even at times our existing cost of Irish people sometimes suffer in there because of the sun. I mean, it's a, it's a big issue, I'm sure you're aware of it. Just one of them. Really Do you any questions? Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Time to about one more question. Uh, I think uh, this gentleman <coughs> over here. Have you considered enlarging the Republic going to the outside? We have a hundred buildings that did exactly that, and they have plenty of space. So we, uh, no, the direct answer, no, we did not. Uh, we, um, we can imagine how that could be possible where you could, uh, you know, remove the canopy that's there today, you would replace it with a, uh, a roof and you would expand the lobby. So certainly that's feasible. Um, but uh, what we looked at here was thinking about uh, you know, how, how to make best use, in our mind, of, of the space you have today. Uh, so, uh, yes, there's probably variations on, on this that are worthy of being explored, and that would be the nature of the, of the design process. I just have one more question. Yes. Because you talked about the lift, <coughs> and when they designed the shores about 50 years ago, we got our first unit like 45 years ago, but they didn't pay any attention to people with disabilities. They saw that everybody's young, everybody can walk. To the extent that recently they put a ramp in the beach clubhouse that to have people go in and out. So when you talk about the lift, does that mean that you can totally avoid the stairs if you go? This is a very, very important issue because so many people now, <coughs> my husband and myself and I don't know who else, we have to go all the way to the garage in order to there is no way to go up and down the stairs. So I think this is one of the very, very important things that you are going to put. But the lift is only going to go, you sit down to the lower lobby? Correct. Okay. The, the idea is, you know, you, you're well aware of the problem that you have a building lobby that has no access yes. to elevators. <laughs> so the idea was to create a linkage between your main lobby and an accessible floor that does have elevator access. I mean, the young people in the future, they have to think about this as very important. But right now, we're going to do that, and it's not that easy to go through down the road. I'd like to make a note. We're going to be the first and only accessible building in the world. This might be yesterday. Yeah, exactly, because when I walked through the other nine buildings, when I was on the design committee, none of them paid attention to the fact that it's they need a ramp or an no elevation. Question. Yes, that's no very important. I want to just also point out, that was one of our biggest things that we wanted to do. Um, and I have to say that you are absolutely right, because not only are we living in a community with people who are aging, and we also live in a community where people might have disabilities such as MS, Parkinson's. We also have a young committee, or a community where they have baby strollers. And so somebody really is trying to drag baby stroller up with baby. And I just, I, I think it is such a beautiful uh, aspect. And I think it, it, we will be able to build it. And I also like to point out that what David was saying at the beginning with regards to the um, amount of, of decrease in our building per square foot, and he's absolutely accurate, obviously. But I want people to remember that while it will be costly and painful to go through, that this building will absolutely be between their building and People, you will get your money back. I, I can't guarantee it 100%, but I mean, real estate, I will tell you, you will get it back. So if you could just kind of look at, at that, if you can hang in there through the project, I think it's, and I love it. I think it's beautiful.
Well, I, I think I think we're about at the time here, so uh, we'll we'll hand it back over to David. But I did I did want to thank you again for your time. Excellent questions, uh, and we we very much look forward to being able to work with you should you select our our, our firms. And uh, thank you again. And uh, we're taking a, about a half hour break so they can uh, take their stuff, take a look at it while they're packing up, and we'll have the other uh, tech, uh, interior designer set up shop. 30 minutes from now. There are some refreshments over here for the show. Uh, this is the uh, time when we're going to uh, have a presentation by Carrier Johnson on Culture to Free. And, uh, this organization is headed up by Greg Sandercheck. And uh, I'm going to turn the microphone over to him so he can make the presentation. And we'll have questions and answers like we did in the previous session. Great. Thank you. Should I say? <laughs> Well, thank you guys for having us. This is uh, Carrier Johnson. I'm um, very excited to be here with my team. We're right here in San Diego. Um, we'll, uh, we'll jump into it, but uh, we want to thank you again for having us. We're excited to be here. Um, we want to start with our interior design concept for El Mirador. Here. Here. Yes, can you speak into the microphone a little bit? Yeah. <coughs> We'll jump into our concept, our interior design concept of the building. Um, what, please, next slide. So a little bit about us, about Carrier Johnson, we're one of the largest and oldest interior design and architecture firms here in San Diego. Uh, we've been in existence for 46 years. We have about 86 colleagues across a number of disciplines. Um, we have offices here in San Diego. It's home for us here in San Diego. Uh, offices in LA and Seattle, uh, New York, soon to be Atlanta, where I'm from, um, and uh, about 80 people. So that's Carrier Johnson. Um, we exist in the mixed use hospitality, higher ed, um, multifamily. Uh, architecture, interior design, or some of our practices and our services that apply here. And our team, our market sector specialist, um, I'm Craig, and I'm joined today by Maria Lopez. Maria, here. Hello, everybody. My name is Maria Lopez. I'm a senior associate and senior project manager at Gary Johnson. I I'm an architect licensed in Mexico. I came here from Veracruz uh, 40 years ago. I have more than 25 of experience working in interiors, and I'm so happy to be in the firm before the variety of people because uh, our company is multicultural, and that's what I love more about our company. Uh, I'm super excited to work in this project especially because there are a lot of colleagues of the people from Mexico that I know. I always looking to have the opportunity to work in Mexican projects, but this is going to be a, a good project that represents us. Um, I will be the point of contact. I'm a project manager who will be in charge of the project, making sure, number one, that we meet in the budget desire, making sure that we meet in the schedules, and be able to obtain the permitting for uh, and, and be a smooth process for all of you. So today we're going to present a concept that it was a group effort. I'm going to introduce Ruben, who is my colleague, interior design uh, colleague that he's been assisted. It's been a group. Uh, everybody participated on opinion. And we were making sure that what we're going to present to you is something that we're so proud of. It. So nice meeting you, and thank you for this opportunity. Thanks, Maria. So again, my name is Ruben. Uh, my leadership here is Craig and Maria. Um, I'm a designer, right hand man to these two here. Um, I'll be assisting with uh, the design development, construction documentation, and pretty much implementing uh, your desires, your design into uh, the project. 
A uh, little bit about me, um, I'm a San Diego native, I'm a local, a proud one, grew up here in San Diego and Tijuana. Uh, joined a local firm because I wanted to be in my hometown, so it is a great pleasure to represent you, uh, make El Mirador even greater. Um, it's such an amazing, iconic building, and we're very proud to um, be here, ultimately, so thank you. And then also with our team, we have our colleagues from Nautilus, um, General Contractor, Robbie Hauser, and uh, Secret Harvey. Hi, uh, Robbie Hauser, Director of Construction for Nautilus General Contractors. Uh, we are a general contractor that focuses on reconstruction, repairs, and renovations for HOAs. Uh, we've been in business for over 20 years in San Diego. Um, we're fully licensed uh, from an A, B, and C license as well. And uh, about 90% of our work is in occupied spaces. We've done uh, this similar type project with CJC's design team. Uh, at uh, another project in San Diego called Sapphire Tower. Uh, and so we're excited to be uh, a part of this great design team as well. Uh, and uh, looking forward to uh, the opportunity to work with all of you. So, thanks. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sigrid Garvey. I would be the project manager for the general contractor, and I have experience and background in civil engineering and a lot of our reconstruction projects here in San Diego. We just finished a 50 story renovation for two towers, uh, Horizons Towers in downtown San Diego. That one's being wrapped up right now, and we're hoping to be able to help you and CJC accomplish this really beautiful project. So it's really important as we go through our concept and you see what we come up with, you know, based on your recommendations, everything's priced. So we have an idea of exactly how much it's going to be, exactly how we can slice and dice that budget and apply it over time or all at once. So just keep that in mind. We have, they've been involved with us as we develop the concept, as I said, um, pricing exists. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's jump into it. Ruben? So you know, it's all scripted, we know we're going to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the movie back and forth, but I'm also the presentation clicker, so get off. <laughs> if at any point we're not speaking well enough, just go ahead and let us know. So uh, to begin with the concept, uh, you know, Coronado, the Crown City, uh, from its inception in the late 1800s, uh, Coronado has always been historically a place of leisure, a place that people go to uh, to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Throughout time, it's actually evolved to a magnificent, beautiful city, uh, one that we are proud of here in San Diego. And what's beautiful is that it actually marries old and new alike. We see that in the architecture, we see that in the values, and most importantly, we see that in the spirit of leisure and enjoyment, right? Um, it is a beautiful thing to be able to actually live and call Coronado home, this beautiful seaside destination. So, life of leisure, sounds pretty nice, right? Uh, we were really inspired ultimately by the lifestyle of Coronado, right? Whether it's a visitor, whether it's a resident, it's really all about enjoyment, right? We're enjoying the fruits of the labor again, we're enjoying our natural environment, uh, we're enjoying people, we're enjoying activities, and really, that's really what embraces us, what creates memories, and ultimately what leads us to our concept. So our concept is an elegant embrace, right? Really inspired by our local natural environment, really inspired by what the ocean, what nature really does for us. It inspires us, it embraces us, uh, it makes us feel happy, right? We really want to focus on natural materiality, uh, both static and organic movement, soft hues, more so on like the pastels, not so much primary colors, and really just having a warm, bright embrace of finishes, amplifying the space, so keeping it light, keeping it warm, and that's it. 
So now we're going to go ahead and move into the development of the concept, and Craig will go ahead and speak. So the first off, thank you for providing feedback to us. We took all of your comments, um, took them very seriously, um, applied them to everything that we did, what you're about to see. So you had told us that we wanted to take inspiration from the surrounding area, from the beach, from surrounding architecture, from the, the plants, from the, so all of that led into development of, of three palettes. Palette one, two, and three. We loved each one so much, we married them all together. And so you're gonna see the final here in a, in a minute as we, as we jump into it. That we took everything that you said, we took everything that we're inspired by, you know, naturally around us, by the architecture of the building, the great bones of the building, or the great postmodern um, building, uh, contemporary, we took all of that into mind as we as we developed our concept. So as we dig in, we, we kind of we looked at, at the, our design concept, we, we came up with a color scheme, and then we started looking at individual materials that would support said scheme. So you're seeing some photographs here for doors and hallways, furniture and accessories, kind of pulling that all together. Um, so you know the wood tones on the floor, the darker metals for, for doors, the um, accent trim, um, some of the, the FF and &E furnishings, the chairs, the accessories, um, materials. All of this helped us create our, our design concept ultimately. Some more ideas based on color palette two for our casework, that built-in shelving unit, you're gonna see that represented in the concept. Um, you know, the hallways, uh, you know, the multi-tenant hallways using wall covering and kind of subdued, um, kind of lighter tones. Um, and again, furniture and accessories that we were inspired by. So one of the things that we, you know, we were finding in all of our residential projects, a lot of use of exposed shelving for our accent pieces. You're gonna see how this equates to our um, design concept. And then ceiling design. Uh, it was really important to simplify the ceilings that you currently have, upgrade them, uh, bring them more in line with the design concept. These are two inspirational images that we found. And hanging from those ceilings are some, some accent-like pictures. Think of this as jewelry in your space. And you can see how we apply this to the body. And some additional architectural details. Um, things you'll find on the reception desk, um, hardware on doors, additional lighting fixtures, hard surfaces. This gives a general feel of our detailing across our concept. Where are you at? What is important to mention is that all of the details that we are taking is, is coming from the history of the details from Grafman Coronado, and we just like presenting to them uh, in a very contemporary way, and, and you will see it in our concept. I'm going to talk about the entrance. What is the more important part? Because it's the world coming to our space. Uh, what we try to do here is uh, these are two uh, pictures of your existing conditions where you have these fountains. And what we're going to try to do is just in, for be efficient and cost, try to leave one of the water features that is existing and removing those uh, planters that you have in, inside of the water picture and, and provide a better, more contemporary feeling with more contemporary plants that will not require water. And uh, can you take to the next one? This is an example of we are proposing. Uh, we are proposing a flooring that is welcoming to your space and is extended to the lobby as part of the entrance. We are showing uh, the existing uh, water picture that we have and we are proposing new landscape that is more uh, architecturally accepted and uh, you will see that there's two benches that will smooth the space and lighting on the on the landscape that will allow to accent our, our green that is necessary in that entrance. 
Here is basically the elements that we use for our concept. Uh, you can see the water feature that we're proposing, that it's a water that falls into the existing uh, water feature, the landscaping and the flooring, and the, the benching. Um, this is what we are proposing for a demolition. We think that there's two corners at each side of the entry that we can uh, use to be part of the lobby, to be, to be able to be more efficient on the space. Uh, the cost is included for replacing this storefront. Uh, we, we're thinking that uh, the storefront can be that is exactly to have it, but there's opportunity to have a slider uh, electronic if you want it. So there's a lot of opportunities here, but this is only a concept. So this is what we're proposing to remove. We are also to, proposing to remove the existing reception desk. And uh, as you can see, we were visiting the, the conference room and we saw the opportunity to provide a, a better layout for you to work in more efficient layout. So welcome home. This is this is your front door step. This is your front entry. Um, as we come in, a couple things going on. We already mentioned um, as we came across the um, the new entryway that flooring comes in, flows into the lobby space. We provided you a, a hearth, um, hearth the center of the home, directly in the middle of the lobby on the existing shaft with um, the encased in tile. We kept the existing travertine columns. We used that as color reference for us for all our materials. Custom rug inspired by water. The local San Diego artist, a piece on the on above the fireplace wall. The existing stairs were reclad in wood. Um, wall surfaces were clad in a in a, a vinyl wall covering for high traffic areas. I already gave you a precursor to the built-in shelving unit for some display. Um, that's your lobby space. Oh, and the chandelier, that jewelry, the chandelier is there too, so. Um, looking lobby west, Maria mentioned we, we straightened out the curtain wall and developed a new desk based on the functionality that you guys needed. Um, so that's the new check-in desk. New millwork behind, tucked back is a hospitality station. The office, the conference room down that corridor. But um, adding in drapery um, at the front to for a soft uh, filtering of light. Looking back the other way through the lobby over that seating arrangement, we tucked in a nice seating group to the corner. You're seeing that shelving unit. We're looking right over the desk. So this is everything in plan with highlights of our finishes. I encourage you guys to all come up and look at the finishes when we're complete. But these are uh, this is a pictorial representation of the physical samples on the desk. Plan-wise, there's that straightened curtain wall, lobby, lounge area. We did include a lift, an ADA lift, taking you down to the lower elevator lobby. <clears throat> In the photo, um, it is kind of shielded with drapery, um, so we hit that. Um, but it's there, it's a requirement for us. So wood on the stair going up to the mezzanine. So that's our plan. It is important to mention that uh, on the reception desk is a very nice desk that it can be seen from the lobby. And you have a lot of video equipment. That's why we thought about having that cabinet with a lot of doors to hide all that equipment and save everything that you need at the, at the reception. Mm -hmm. And it looks nice and hidden. Mm -hmm. The computers are also hidden with a higher um, surface. So that's what I was going to bring up about the, the reception desk. So as we go forward, I already mentioned the drapery flanking the, the new fireplace. So that hides that ADA lift taking you down. Um, very important for us. We, we don't want that ugly lift sticking out <laughs> in, the, in the lobby, so we, we hit it behind drapery. It would again filter light all the way through. 
we kept the state, the existing railing, um, the existing glass railing, but we did re encase the, the stair. You're starting to see, you know, we're already advanced into CDs. These are these are actual elevations that will go into our construction documents. Um, we're showing additional inspiration images, another nod to the wall finishes that we had. Um, a rendering of the conference room. So pretty simple, final wall covering on the walls, um, table for 10, some art, a new light fixture, a very simple ceiling, and that hospitality counter. So we're, we're back in the corridor, office, conference room, hospitality counter, sink, um, there's a refrigerator under counter, refrigerator, quartz countertop, additional display above, um, so as hospitality, or you already told you what's happening behind these doors, um, housing that equipment. More elevations, the office door with fluted glass for privacy, the hospitality station, you're seeing that in plan, so we have a reception desk, hospitality area, office conference, a nod to the furniture, a nod to the finishes, a nod to the office furniture. The mail room. <clears throat> On plan, we didn't move the mail room. What we did, we, we replaced the mailboxes. Um, so we can get a custom color. And these mailboxes, when the carrier comes, opens from the front. So he loads everything, closes it, residents access mail from the front. Behind is a room for large deliveries and packages. So we opened up that whole room behind there. Simplify the finishes, tackable surface, trash for all those, for all the junk mail. <laughs> Just throw it away right there. <laughs> and tackable surface for, for postings in the building. Um, again, more elevations. That's the elevation of that, that trash tackable uh, surface above. There was a restroom behind. We replaced those finishes. Mirror and light fixture for the bath, the restroom and uh, pictorial of the finishes representing elevator lobby. So this is not only adjacent to the lobby space, but all the way up through the tower. We're proposing a very simple approach, wood panel panels, uh, painted wood, or I'm sorry, painted existing elevator doors, the porcelain flooring in front, a very simple ceiling with cove lighting, and then we're seeing a peak down the corridor, which in the next slide you'll see what it looks like down the resident corridor. This is the new resident front door. We're going to laminate either an existing or new. We have some research to do with you guys for durability. We've priced new doors. Um, so that's in. So we wrap the vinyl wall covering for durability into the, the entry vestibule with two accent pieces, which will as your address. The uh, carpeting is a custom carpeting. We have a representational sample on the table for quality, or actually on the floor. Uh, we're still working on adjusting the color. So that's that's custom to the to you guys. Additional elevations and finishes. And then finally, the elevator caps. We've priced to, to refinish the elevator caps. Um, you're seeing three elevations, side walls, back wall, both, both elevators. You're seeing an inside hard surface floor for durability, pets especially. Um, and uh, all wall surfaces are reflective. So you can check your appearance when you exit the elevator. <laughs> Very important. So that's our presentation. So we're we may, we also gonna uh, start question and answers. And during the question and answers, we have like a video that uh, if you have questions about the spaces, we can take you around the space and we can just answer it like in detail every space that you want that you would like to see. So what do you think you like? <laughs> what about the cost?
Big guns. Bring the bring the guy that knows. Man. <laughs> so based off the the concept that was presented today uh, with design engineering finishes based off the of square footages, including the entryway lobbies and all the corridors, uh, the rough budget is four and a half million. Do we have my <clears throat> So, so and to that to that number, you know, keep in mind all the corridors. So all the elevator lobbies and all the corridors are in there. We could split that out. So create the documents and then you parcel out the number of floors over a period of time. And there there are value engineered opportunities, of course. Um, we could focus areas to just the lobbies and corridors, as Craig said. Um, we could uh, option out certain elements, include other finishes rather than certain items. Just giving opportunities. <laughs> so, but as as of what was presented today, that was uh, our rough budget. So, just so you. Know. A very smart design. Thank you. Well done. Um, you seem to, so you're going to be responsible for all the construction. Yes, sir. Yes. I know the most painful part is not, this young lady. In combination with us. In com oh, great. So we have a whole family. We, we, yeah. <laughs> Got it when we work with a, in this setting that is design built, that means that we are together from the day one. We will make sure that the design is completed as we pre presented to you or as was approved. And we will be checking face by face on pricing, making sure that we are still in budget, but working together from day one. Very good. So those were my three points. Pricing obviously is, is very difficult. Definitely. Once you agree on the design, the ongoing uh, reliability of the products from a maintenance standpoint. So for instance, the, the hallways you had were beautiful. I noticed the kick was light in color, which looks gorgeous, but up against, you know, vacuums and such, it might look marked up in a short period of time. The bigger question I had was for you. So as elegant as your design is, how are you going to maintain that level of cleanliness in the surrounding area during the actual construction process? Because you have you seen the site? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So from a not just a staging standpoint, but every day we live there. Yeah, we're, we're in and out, and it's our home. And we understand it's under construction. Yes. How well are you going to keep that in terms of cleanliness and safety during the process? So uh, a little bit about us, and I think this is a a, a great question to bring up. Um, as Sigrid mentioned before, we've done this type of work before. Uh, and we did it in two high rises. What we found is uh, from a, a daily uh, routine, we set a precedent with our team of how we're accessing certain areas that we're working on that day, making sure that we're checking in with each uh, team member uh, consistently, and then walking each floor at the end of each day to make sure that we're keeping them uh, clean and that there's no trip hazards or uh, leftover material in the way because we understand that you still live there every day. It's your home. Uh, and uh, another thing that we've, from our experience, found is that it is construction dusty, right? <laughs> and so uh, we have uh, factored in uh, air scrubbers during the process. And air scrubbers are a filtration device that uh, will require replacement of filters through the construction process, but it, it limits the amount of dust um, that uh, could potentially mitigate into your unit during the construction phase. And we found that that helps um, with residents' uh, construction fatigue, because uh, we know that that happens. Um, this is a, uh, a lengthy project with all the components together number of floors, different finishes, uh, unit door replacements means that we're going to have to coordinate with every homeowner to get access 
in a timely manner to replace the door and make sure that it's secure by the end of the day. Uh, we pride ourselves on, on being a, a construction company that focuses on site security and safety. And uh, when with the experience of working in occupied spaces, uh, we do have a strict protocol of making sure that if we are working in a space around a unit or uh, affecting a certain unit, that the um, unit itself is secure after we are done. Uh, and this project has a, a level and a need for uh, on-site supervision throughout, and you would get a dedicated on-site superintendent uh, for this project, and uh, Sigrid would be your dedicated project manager. So there's multiple levels of oversight to make sure that you have a successful project. You're welcome. How long is this project from beginning to end to project to last? Uh, it's about a nine to 10 month ordeal. Yes. I have several questions. Uh, <laughs> As usual, <laughs> it was the same thing that for the previous presentation, they use also wood, and then you also are going to be using wood. Is that the new trend nowadays? Because wood is not very uh, resistant to the moisture around here. Oh, Roy can help me to, to, to answer this. But definitely wood is, is not real wood, what we use. Oh, I see. It's a very... Uh, it's so with, okay. with modern technology and finishes these days, uh, you know, a lot of laminates, wood laminates okay. look like real wood. Right, yeah. uh, you know, there's been years, wood been years that could be directly adhered to drywall that don't need paneling, which actually increases the cost as well. Those also have manufacturer stains and uh, protective wear layers as well. Oh, okay. um, so that's, that's an opportunity. That's, that's the answer to that question. The other thing, you're still going to use carpet. And the same with the previous presentation. I mean, so the newer building now, the new remodel, many of them eliminated the carpet altogether. It's very, very difficult to take the carpet, and we have so many cats around, and sometimes it's very difficult to get the stains and the cement. So, is there any? Um, uh, chance that we might eliminate or just make it minimum amount of cut, yeah. the whole weight. Agreed and understood. There's a reason for the carpet, and that's footfall. So if we go hard surface, you're going to hear every footstep down that corridor forever and always. Yes. Thank you. So it's it is <laughs> yes. You know we're going to have to work on the carpet. Clean it, yes, but it, it for acoustics, it's the best. Right, and I know some buildings they should put the carpet in front of the traffic area only. So when people walk in front of your door, yeah, there's carpet, but in between, they have like hard floor. We can work that out with you, and and we can actually, you know, it's such an important issue. We can we can mock up, you know, two or three solutions, okay. um, and then then make the determination together, but. We do recommend carpet for football. Okay, the other thing I want to, uh, the first time I see in any of the buildings, and I was on the design committee in the previous uh, board, but none of them had a hospitality, uh, hospitality area. So what is a hospitality area in board? It doesn't have like a, a microwave, a refrigerator, coffee maker, and all this, because if you're going to have all this, it's going to be like a kitchen. And that can create a lot of traffic. Everybody's going to be wanting to eat his food or uh, make a cup of coffee and so on and so forth. So what does it, uh, what does it have? It has, well, what our intention is today, this is a conceptual idea. If we win the project and we're lucky to be win the project, we will have to have a programming session to validate every necessity that you have. You will have to name a representative who's going to bring your concerns, and we will work on those concerns as we go. If you have uh, worry about this area, about this area, we need to rework something, we will. This is only a conceptual idea that we create based on the questionnaires that we receive from you, 
and just to try to win the prize. I'm too much, too much points. Just, just one more thing. So interior design is inspired by various, various industries. And so residential is very much inspired by hospitality. When you check into a five-star hotel, depending the, the type of property that you have, the hospitality station is expected. So when I come to rent your unit for two months, when I travel with my wife, I'm going to check in at the desk. I'm going to grab a cup of coffee and complete my check-in. Yeah, so it's like a hotel. That's why it's there. Two more, two more things. Yeah, the shelves. My experience, my home. When you ever have shelves anywhere, just just nothing except clutter and dust and so on. So what what are the value of the shelves there? It's it's basically a statement of decoration. Uh, stay, take all the corner of your space to try to make it homey and, 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 and really welcoming. Uh, you can put books there, you can put a special, uh, let's say, decor, artifacts as we put in over there. That's the fortune of that. Uh, and as you can see, we saw as an influence on all of the best hotels right now, all of the best buildings, they always have those shelving staff. If you go to Ritz Carton, if you go to those places, and we want to have that touch of hospitality in your lobby because it deserves it. This, this building deserves a lobby of a nice hotel. Well, the let's, let's, is beautiful. It's really wonderful. So when we, we do this for associations all the time, it's our job to help raise the, the value of your homes. And so, you know, we're presenting a design that's gonna elevate the building to the point where the value of your home is going to increase. Residents looking for a new place to live or looking for that elevated experience. You know, work from home is prevalent. People are spending more time in their homes. They want a five-star experience when they arrive home. That's what we've given you on a budget. So we, we were very intentional with our selections and what we're showing you, you know, to get that five-star look, you know, with a reasonable budget. Very nice. The last thing I have, it has to do with security. And we address that issue before. Is there any way that you can put some sort of a lock on the door? I'm sure you are familiar with all the security. Absolutely, security. absolutely. As, and like I'm saying, that would be part of the programming requirements that in detail we will come back Right. And not only about security, but also about your mail, about your how the flow comes from the outsiders. Every single detail, we will uh, definitely need to have a session of programming with you or your representative, and we'll be able to meet every requirement that you have. Thank you very much. How soon could you start? <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's nice to hear. This uh, building is right on the coast. Uh, what decisions have you made, have driven your decisions uh, because of that, that we're right on the water versus being 30 miles in the In terms of style? Uh, style, the choice of materials, uh, inter interface with wind, yeah. water, humidity. Uh, how have your uh, decisions been influenced by where this is? Sure. Uh, remind me to show the, the lobby, please. Uh, our in inspiration on the design was the water and the other cups. The colors are part of the blue ocean. The lobby, if you see the carpet, the rock carpet that we have, it will re represent water. Can you show them more? Like, and, and you can see the carpet that we're showing. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like a splash of water. If you see the, we, we select this type of uh, artwork as an example. This is a Coronado artist that, that uh, is it's, uh, water influenced for that uh, piece of art. That really goes well, as you can see, really goes well with, uh, with the skin. You see the colors, it goes with the skin, that instant inspiration is water on the color. And in, ter in terms of materials, the same thing. Um, I think the question might have to do with the durability, that if it's a wear and tear, if it's all there, and then it's Right, right. So, um, 
great question. Like Maria just mentioned to me, it's all commercial grade uh, finishes. Um, you know, as designers and architects to get into the city, we have to specify commercial grade products. For instance, the floor that extends from the outside to the inside, that's a through body porcelain. Um, through body means is that the color actually goes all the way through the actual porcelain. You know, a lot of times with ceramic tile, you tip the top and you see the white at the bottom. So also the tile is rectified, so it has very clean lines. It's also R11, which means it's even better for skin resistance as well. Um, again, with the question about the, the wood and using wood a lot, again, technology today, laminates, it's a plastic laminate, right? Or it could be a wood veneer, but it could also have a stainer finish that it helps the floor durability. Water walls are vinyl wall covering, which is great for high traffic, cleanable, some of them are even bleach cleanable as well. So those are the things that we, we, we think of, right? You know, as interior designers, you see this beautiful space, these beautiful renderings, but our minds have, you know, the technical capacity to really understand also that, you know, it not only has to look pretty, but it has to be durable. And we're constantly considering, primarily, a lot of the times we're considering costs, <laughs> and then we're also considering durability of materiality as well. One final question. Uh, Finding the elevator, I mean the lift, you got it behind the screen, I come in, how do I know it's there? We can't hear you. So, I'm okay, uh, I'm talking about the, finding the lift in the lobby, you walk in, you need the lift behind the screen, how do I find it? Yes, so the drapery that you see in the rendering, um, it's actually mechanical drapery, right? So those could actually just move electronically back and forth. Right. Also, again, this is a conceptual presentation. Uh, you do have a receptionist as well that could lead you know people to the right direction. Uh, but again, you know, since we don't really see it because of the drapery, it's ultimately going to be a mechanical drapery that actually just moves and closes. And it's translucent. And it's translucent. It's right? translucent. You can see it behind, mm -hmm. but it doesn't pop up. Okay. Uh, sure. Hi, I'm very new to the building. In fact, just one week today. Well, my, my question, <laughs> my question is: Has it been discussed? Keyless entry uh, is it an option? Is that something we talked about already? No, but last year I just came from renting there, and it's really wonderful. Like it. Yeah, if we go for door hardware or work with, with uh, less and come up with some solutions so we can work better for the price. So I think it's an option we can look at. Yeah. Yeah. How about under the house numbers? I think that'd be really cool. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, so first of all, there are some people who've asked questions and I can't hear them. And so I was wondering um, if the question could be repeated. Um, but I do have a question. Sure, um, I'm a full-time resident, and although I'm happy to hear my property will increase, I'm more interested in my daily life being improved. And so I was glad to see you have a lift included, but I was hoping uh, it would also go to the upper lot. So that it's just getting on the lift is a one-step process. We already have the option to enter our building. Last night I had a guest and she was in a wheelchair and she came in through the uh, lower lobby to access the elevators. Um, so I'm just wondering if maybe that wasn't included or could it be included that we have a lift going to the yes. upper level and avoid all stairs? Yes, totally understand your question. And you know, when we created the concept, we're taking everything you know, budget-wise into to, um, account. So yes, the lift can go for the three levels. We'll adjust the price and we'll have to adjust the design just a little bit. Um, to make that happen, but it's a possibility. Three floor lift is a very common thing. So non hydraulic, you know, or non shaft rated. So we can do that. Yes. Yeah. This is going to be the 
the same wallpaper for the whole building, the corridors and lobby and everything. Yes. Just one. Well, there's there's some accent wall covering as well, um, but that's the main one. So, and um, you'll notice that there's a striation to that. There's a and that's intentional. So we had those scenes. Um, so, um, going back to your question about disruption of, of daily life, um, you know, nine month process. So, you know, please know that that the carrier Johns and Alice team. We're going to be very proactive in the communication to all residents, and so you'll have adequate warning of when your floor is going to be under construction, when we're going to be in your space, when we're replacing your door. So I think that that communication is critical um, in a project like this, and and so please know that we recognize that, and that makes or breaks a, a project. So um, we will be very proactive with our communication. So. Yes, ma'am. I had a question. Um, a lot of the buildings that have been remodeled, when you get into when you get into the various floors, they're real wow. I didn't see um, like artwork or seating areas. This was some of the things that uh, some of the buildings have done that are just gorgeous. Like you step off the elevator, there's a little seating area, and then the wallpaper and the art is beautiful. But I didn't see that in any of your renditions. So, what are your plans for it? Your it is there, and it's very selective and minimal. Um, you know, your taste, my taste, is not my neighbor's taste. So, we, we try to be very, very, we tone it down a little bit. Um, in the elevator lobby, would you know in the elevator lobby? <coughs> There's opportunity for two benches <coughs> in there and artwork. Um, so, we can do that. We have artwork at the end of the corridors. Um, in the multi tenant corridors, which will have to come together as a group to select. <coughs> Sorry. So, as we spin around, <coughs> so we can do a bench <coughs> here and here. There's also an opportunity to do away with the sconce and do artwork there and there on every floor, all the way up. It would give some, some personality to all the floors. <clears throat> Can you go to the um, corridor shop? So down, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Down the long corridor, we have a piece of artwork, and that could be the same artist as we use a local artist downstairs in the in the lobby. It could be a companion pieces all the way up, but I like to leave that open for the residents to really have say in uh, what we have in the walls. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I do think there needs to be some sort of seating area. Mm -hmm. A bench, you know. The, a bench, yeah. a nice little couple of chairs with a little table. Of course. Some things should be included, I think, in every. We can, we can do that. On every level. Mm -hmm. okay. Two more in the back. Um, a couple of questions. You're showing um, the same tile work coming from the outside into the lobby. What sort of impact does uh, rain have on that? Of it getting wet? As Ruben stated, that that porcelain tile wears like iron. Yeah, so I'm it's a, about the wear. I'm talking uh, about some of the visitors falling over. And you can kind of yeah. notice that a couple of buildings, uh, the minute there's a drizzle, that's put out, at least aesthetically, in my view. Ugly mats, <laughs> ugly rubber mats, right from the front door <laughs> out to the walkway. And, uh, and uh, I'm just wondering whether that tile is selected, and I understand it hasn't been selected, but is there a way to run that tile in where it's not slippery? <clears throat> That's an yes. initial question. I'm afraid I have a couple of others. That so uh, with the, the slip resistance, so the tile as specified has the highest slip resistance that we can get right now. To validate your concern, I think we mock it up, we wet it down, and we see how slippery it is. It may not be the right solution. Aesthetically, it's the right solution, and the slip resistance is there, but you're absolutely right. Sometimes when it gets wet, it's a little too slippery. Oh, and, so let's test it. This. Sand, sand it, 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 porcelain's great with sand. You'll hear it, 
it'll crunch under your feet, but it won't destroy the tile. It won't. It won't dig out the growl. It would. It would. It's the right material for the beach. And getting back to the hospitality, I'm going to call it a kitchen for just a second. Sure. Uh, you know, first of all, you're going to walk in the front door of our place, and you're going to look over to the right. I'm not sure who's going to be using that area and who's going to be responsible for keeping it as attractive as it is this minute in mm -hmm. the drawings, because it won't be kept that way. It just can't be. People are too busy during the day. So you've created something where you walk in, and the impact is the lovely fireplace, and then what my bias calls me is going to be a very unattractive, unenclosed, you know, kitchen area. That's number one. And also, I don't understand who uses it. Mm -hmm. The idea of there being a comparable to a Ritz Carlton check-in, I don't remember walking into a Ritz Carlton ever seeing their hospitality space available for me as a person checking in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about the aesthetics of it. I just and not certain that it even exists. So why would we put something like that in to begin with? And secondly, the, uh, its location just completely throws me off. Yeah, um, understood. Believe me, with with high end hotels, it's it's a thing, um, and that's that's what we're trying to emulate. However, in today's presentation, we talked about a three story lift. We talked about keyless entry. We need to make some budget announcements or some adjustments. That hospitality station is a placeholder for us, you know, holding some money. If we don't go full bore on, you know, coffee station and refrigerator and plumbing and sink, <coughs> it's more of an aesthetic piece that we can style, you know, to, to kind of lend to a aesthetic, you know, something that looks very homey, very nice when you walk in. We can do those other things. So it's on the table, point taken. But I promise you that every high end hotel, <laughs> it's there and it's coming. Um, you know, COVID has, has kind of you know brought that to the forefront. The more of that hospitality experience. Sorry, could you, well, excuse me, could you put it inside the office room? Yes. Driver. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so you guys face it. Can we put it inside the conference room for the people to come in there? How many meetings in there? Smaller table, yeah. like a smaller kitchenette type thing with a copy. Yes, no, sir. You didn't mention where is Robert Mandy? Where is the manager of? <laughs> Adjacent next door. So, <clears throat> I, I think, um, right there through the glass, there's the manager's office right there. Is there yeah. any chance that you put the coffee? No. I, I think the, the important thing to note about this is the opening of the space, which is really appealing, and the detail if it's a kitchen or not. Uh, I mean, it could be a bookshelf with sculptures, uh, but I, I really like the openness and the advantage of not having, you know, uh, a big, that area there. Um, I understand that the world is, you know, going towards that direction. This space in other buildings uh, is being used by, if you don't want to, if you want to work on the lobby without the kids, you know, jumping on top of you, you can just go down, take a coffee, and that's how the world is turning into. And I, I acknowledge that, but maybe we can uh, further down the road if we go ahead with you guys, we could uh, hide the kitchenette and maybe some doors and yeah, make it just a, the importance. I like that, uh, that even better. Yeah. That would be great. So we're not married to it. Yeah. It's just, you know, we, we were tasked with bringing you the best of the best. This is what we're seeing, and that's what we're presenting. So we're not married to it. You can adjust it. Another thing that is important to bring up, like, uh, we are going to the tendencies of design right now. And before, just in our office, in the offices, you arrived in the, in the break room was on the corner with doors and clothes. Now you go to an office, a very contemporary office, it is different. 
the way that the people is totally different. They arrive and you see the coffee space. And the first time I saw that is, oh, how weird it is, but it looks amazing. And people start getting used to that and be conscious about it. And, and we can find out if it's worth it or not. But like I'm saying, all of those details can be refined in our programming session with your specific requirement. That was actually the question. Because, because it's for the work hospitality, the welcoming space. Even if it's not a hotel, it's, it's a space that people arrive and feel good and feel nice. Like a, like you are in a hotel. That's the concept of hospitality. I can yell at What is the time and process for the construction license? Licenses, permits. Permits? What are we running? Permit wise? Permit wise. Wait, yeah, it's close to like three to four months, depending on certain components. That, um, but with your space, that's going to be limited. Uh, in the city of San Diego, removal and replacement of finishes does not re require a finish uh, or a permit. The uh, if you are changing and modifying the space, that triggers the permit. So because we are uh changing some of the walls in the interior of the lobby uh reframing some of the ceiling putting in the the ada lift uh those elements would go through a permit review um, but in terms of the corridors we're not changing walls in the corridors all of that is removal and replacement of finishes so just on that, on that note yes and I think this is really healthy dialogue, but can you share with us your process So, assuming that we went forward um, and that the price was acceptable, what is the process where you can sit down with groups of people to vet out all of these ideas? Absolutely. Because it's very good. You shouldn't person. expect all of the answers to come from this meeting. This is just kind of more of a <laughs> I, I totally understand. It's a very, very good question. Uh, first of all, we, we need to win the project, award the project. And as soon as we award the project, the, the project is divided in different phases. The first phase that we would have in our proposal would be programming validation. And that's exactly what we talk about. We will need, you will need to have a committee of one or two people representing all of you. And we will interview each one of the persons that you tell us, and we will refine the requirements in, in, in a process, what we call program. Let's say, for example, that you want to have a door, then we will just create a document uh, what is the programming results and, and we will send it to you so you can agree that what we hear from you is what we're going to do. After that is approved, then the next phase is a schematic design. A schematic design is to refine this concept with the new requirements and the new ideas that you have, making the modifications and creating plans reflecting those modifications. At the same time, that said, would be uh, interacted with our contractor, so he has to reprise the pace and make sure that we are on the right budget. In that specific uh, phase, we will reiterate the specifications of the materials, we reiterate the requirements and layouts, elevations, uh, and large plans, so you can understand what is on the project. And then we will jump in design development, the third phase, which is when we start working with the engineers. After the design is approved and layouts, materials, we will work with the electrical engineer. He will need to make sure that the, the panel is, needs to build into the panel for the electrical lift for the lighting that is going to meet uh, requirements for ADA, 
and requirements for time 24. And we will meet with the mechanical engineer in case it needs to do some reworking of the ducting. When the, the engineers finalize their design, we can say we're going to add, and we just jump in construction documents, adding all the notes and uh, studies to demonstrate the city that we are building in code, meaning exiting all the formulas that they like to see for provide adequate exiting, all the formulas and clearances that meeting ADA clearances in the city, all the requirements that the city wants to see in order to approve the project, it will be in that set. And that's what we submit for permitting. In the meantime, our contractor will reprice the set of cities again to reiterate our budget. As soon as we get the permit, we can start construction. During the construction, uh, the process is every time we have meetings with the contractor, every material that he's going to buy, before he put the order to buy the material, he sent it to us to make sure that it's the material that we specify. We stamp it, approve it, and send it back to them. And then they can start ordering examples. We provide them normally the lead time of each one of the materials, a contact person, so they can get everything on time and meet a special schedule that we're going to uh, have at the beginning. So, and then uh, during the construction, we will be coming to see the site, uh, responding uh, RFIs that we call request for information for any spe special condition that we found on the space and we will finalize construction. We do the walkthrough, final the walkthrough, when we make sure that everything is according our design, according permitting, so they can get the approval from the city because there will be another inspector on site to make sure that the plans are by the permit plans. And that's the end of the construction. I think his question might have been, what would be your timeline to get us through development? Three months. Three months. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, assuming that we, that we engage with you guys, can you articulate how your contracts are structured? Are they performance-based against milestones? That's how you build? So in, in terms of the, for construction progress, we bill on a monthly basis based off of uh, completion. So it's percent completion that we've actually installed or performed on site during that month. Okay, so you, guys, you guys do milestones and say, okay, this is milestone one, milestone two, and then when you hit that, then we both agree, okay, you've executed to that, and so then we get built. Right? So we, we develop a schedule of values. Um, we don't build based off of milestones. We build based off of completion of the work set on the schedule values. Okay. Yeah. I just want to clarify, the three months was the design portion. So that's three months a month working with you guys, validating a month of schematic design, a month of design development. Then we're going to go into CDs. CDs, six weeks. Permitting is nine weeks. And then construction will follow. So, you know, you guys are looking, if you get going tomorrow, you know, we're looking at about five months until we start swinging hammers. Okay. So the holidays, you know, we may want to skip the holidays and start next year early. So just FYI. Thank you. Yeah. I'll make it really quick. Um, back to the bookshelf. Uh, a lot of the towers have the built-in green chills with the lights coming down. I just feel like it's a much cleaner look than the bookshelves. I'm just wondering, is that an older look? Because um, you had mentioned a lot of the hotels are doing these bookshelves now. But I just like the way it looks. And it would be nice going up the stairs. Okay. Are you familiar, like, have you walked to the other buildings 
Yes. Because we had a presentation where our building, the units, are selling for far less than the other buildings. We need to correct that. This is our opportunity. We're not going to have another opportunity. We're not going to redo this. Right. So keeping that in mind, if you could, I know this is a rough draft and it's beautiful, but anything to give us more of a wow, you know, wow, you walk in, it's a wow. Every wall is a wow. Either it be uh, art, lighting, or some fixture. Um, I think if you could keep that in mind for us. Absolutely. Because we are in competition with the other buildings. Absolutely. When, and we when really we... want to be the number one. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We have to be number one. I, I didn't see any fireplace on the other building. No. And this is a very well, nice and warm <laughs> space. Warming that is a feature that warms the space. The artwork can be selected by you. Uh, one of the things that we can just provide you is a system and select furniture, artwork in in uh, FNP where we go. And we can work with you in getting the best people to you to select the artwork that you like or sculptures or whatever you want to have as an additional wow factor. Because keeping in mind that is not part of the construction. The construction is what we have to be so careful to see and not go over the board yes. and making the budget that you like to have. And that's where we just were being so conscious about the materials, the, the, the things we were proposing. One of the things we would love to have, what about if we have all the ceiling and wood? Everybody would not love that, but it's, we will, we're very conscious about the cost. That's the, the same thing about the fountain. We, we need to just have it like a pop out about the existing fountains, yes. but and we keep it the same. that too. Right. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yes? Okay, we have two questions. One is when this um, project, if it were to start, then will it be going through the summer months? Do you think it's more of a deficit? Internal. Yes, it was. Then, okay, so it will be going through the summer months, and then um, during that back and forth in that time period before the actual construction, um, when you're talking to all of the residents and kind of getting their ideas for it, um, can, they can bring up um, questions about uh, the material, because I think a lot of them are concerned about the existing marble and granite we have and having to laminate over them because there is parts of the building that are laminated already and it's become kind of a disaster as far as the aesthetics and the peeling and all of that. So I think they're concerned um, uh, as to the extent of, you know, actual granite, marble, and just the the um, materials that can be used to uh, for durability and long term. Yeah. The flooring as it is, is being removed. So no lamination, brand new flooring going in its place. The only reuse is the travertine columns. So we're replacing all the flooring. Replacing all the flooring and the other elements on the walls as well, all of that comes off and new gets installed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, first off, uh, congratulations on the project. I think it's very elegant, very soothing, I off the colors. And I just wanted to say I understand my neighbor's concerns, but I, I was sold on the coffee station. <laughs> uh, just because I'm, a, I'm a, a, addicted to coffee and the idea of uh, being able to go down and get my mail and have a sip of coffee or maybe see someone that I don't want to take up to my house that I can receive there sure. and, and offer them a coffee. I think it's lovely and I'm sold. Thank you. I just would like to see. I think that oh, I'm more happy. My voice is loud. <laughs> I, I think that um, my only comment is that we have this wonderful opportunity that we haven't had for years and years. It seems like we're getting close to more. I think we're all getting excited. And I think we have to remember that we have to think about our future owners. And we have to we have to think about how we are moving forward in our lives, which I think is what you were talking about. Maybe it, it does seem a little odd to walk in and see the lobby counter 
to the right and then a, a beautiful coffee station. But I would like everyone to think about how many times you have guests come and you're not there yet and they're waiting in the lobby and it would be a lovely feature to offer them some coffee or they could just go fix themselves a cup of coffee. And I think you could also probably have some magical doors that close. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think that it's a good it thing, be... but maybe they, we just have something that goes like that and then just comes open when we want it to. We'd add it to, you know, any sales forecast, there's an amenity station in the lobby, and it would become a perk. Yeah, I, I really agree. I think that thing has 20, 20. <laughs> It's, it's like we really tried to go timeless with the finishes and you know so standing the test of time so we all remember the 1980s and peach and blue and you know which is back now by the way no <laughs> peach and blue here because we know it's going to go out of style again living in the 70s this is lovely thank you thank you all very much for your presentation today ask me any questions I've indicated to the audience before that uh, we are going to go out uh, with this uh, slideshow, give it to everybody, all 148 owners, if you will. And uh, we are sending out, uh, uh, if they have questions over the next week or so, uh, they will ask them. That's all centered into uh, Jack Hammond, and then he will direct the questions to the appropriate party, probably to you, Craig, and go on from there. I just want to clarify that you will receive a PDF document mm -hmm. showing all the presentation, but at the same time you will receive a link that people can just double click and you can get into the video. You will see arrows that you can push and then you will take you to the next room. So everybody can get into navigate into the video with the link that we're going to send and just follow the, the arrows and then you can go to the area that you want. Thank you all for coming today. I hope it was productive. I think it was. Do more than I know it was. See the materials that we, we have and touch it and, and 